2016, roll call. Uh, Dickman here. Dunstan here. Brillo here. David here. Sweetie here. Skalski here. Taper here. Chandler here. We have minutes uh, from two meetings. Uh, minutes of the May 24, 2016 meeting held from previous meeting. Motion. Uh, uh, Dickman will make a motion. We approve the minutes of the May 24, 2016 meeting. Seaford seconds. Roll call. Dickman aye. Johnston aye. Brillo aye. Kavich aye. Speedy aye. Kizikowski aye. Perel aye. Seaford aye. Chandler aye. And minutes, item three is minutes of the June 14th, 2016 meeting. Need a motion. Okay, Dickman will make a motion. We approve the minutes of the June 14th, 2016 meeting. Seaford seconds. Roll call. Dickman aye. Johnston aye. Perel aye. Kavich aye. Speedy aye. Kizikowski aye. Perel aye. Seaford aye. Chandler abstains. Moving to significant common council actions, Carrie. Can, can I interrupt for just a second? Yeah. Mary, you were not at the May 24th meeting. Okay, then I abstain. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. All right. Um, item four, significant, significant common council actions. Council approved the following. A request for proposals, invitation for the development of a community-driven strategic plan. City of Oak Creek reviewed the City of Oak Creek 2016 survey results presented by Cobalt Community Research. Note that the survey results will, results will be posted online. They have been posted online. Uh, presentation can be made at a future plan commission meeting if you so choose. Council also approved resolution approving a certified survey map for the property at 9330 South Nicholson Road and a resolution approving a certified survey map for the property at 7880 South 13th Street. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Item 5A under new businesses, conditions and restrictions. It's a review for a conditional use permit request for automobile sales and service and a car wash submitted by Brent Wampler Custom Facilities on the properties at 7008 and 7018 South 27th Street and 2500 West Rawson Avenue. Tax key numbers 737-9989-001, 737-9988-001, and 737-9037-001. Gary. And commissioners will recall that this was recommended for approval at the <clears throat> 614 meeting. A previous discussion uh, was held regarding the extension to Riverwood or of Riverwood Boulevard through the property. There was concern expressed regarding the need to dedicate and improve the proposed extension. Also, the proposed extension, you will recall, does not align with the current official map. Should the Commission and ultimately Common Council desire to see this extension dedicated and approved as proposed by WISDOT, the City would first need to amend the official map for this neighborhood. The applicant also has expressed a concern regarding the requirement to dedicate and improve the roadway as it serves as a collector street and also that a portion of the property that may be served is heavily impacted by wetlands, therefore the road going right through it would impact the wetlands. And the cost of the roadway um, it was expressed should not be their sole responsibility. Section 14.180 of the Municipal Code does allow for the Council, upon recommendation of the Plan Commission, to grant variations and exceptions for this dedication requirement as part of a CSM process. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of the proposed conditions and restrictions that are part of this particular conditional use permit request. If you go to page 3 of 9, section I, this is requiring a certified survey map prior to reviewing any site building landscaping review plan or any of those plans. The certified survey map would combine all properties into one. Uh, this would also address the right of way for any public streets as a, illustrated on the official map. And that's where the dedication and the improvements are mentioned. With the exception of any variation granted by the council pursuant to section 14.18. Under Section 3A, parking for this project shall be provided in accordance with Section 170403, and the number of parking stalls shall be in accordance with the particular sections of 0403 sub J2, M through N. This is just stating that there would be the uh, required number of parking stalls for customers, employees, etc. Under 3I, access to West Rawson Avenue in accordance with execute agreements and access management plans subject to the review and approval by Milwaukee County, which would be required prior to the issuance of any city building permits. Also access to 27th Street in accordance with execute ag agreements and access management plans subject to review by WSDOT. This approval would be required also prior to the issuance of any 
city building permits. Page four of nine, under section D, landscaping adjacent to buildings, a requirement for a three foot landscape area between the edge of pavement and pavement and entrance elevation of buildings. This is a standard requirement. On page five of nine, under architectural standards A, all structures shall meet the requirements of sections 170329 and 170330. This is in regards to the 27th Street and the Regional Retail Overlay District. This actually requires some additional architectural standards above what is in our current code for um, buildings that are not in the Overlay District. Essentially, it's requiring brick, masonry, stone, uh, windows, those kinds of things. Um, so this is a concern potentially with the proposed design of the building, but we are working with the applicant on that design. Not necessarily a subject for tonight, but if there is any discussion, just want to bring it up that we are working with uh, the applicant for those plan designs. Page six of nine, sub C. This is going on to give a couple more uh, requirements for the facade of the building, which is the 75% visible perimeter requirement, stating that it should be finished with acceptable glass brick or decorative masonry as viewed from all sides of the public street. Sub I, no overhead garage doors or loading docks shall face upon any street right of way or residential property unless otherwise modified by the plan commission pursuant to seven, section 171009 sub E of the municipal code. This is another requirement that uh, we would like to talk to you about. The current design shows that there are overhead doors that would be fronting on 27th street or facing 27th street rather. Um, applicant has indicated that there would be some treatments so that these overhead doors would not read as overhead doors, but more like windows with, with glass. Uh, might be a, something that uh, the Planning Commission would wish to discuss. Page 7 of 9, building and parking setbacks, just uh, establishing that there are some increased setbacks due to the location within the overlay district. Under Section 8, C, no outdoor storage of equipment, junk or damaged or non-inventory vehicles, Parts or supplies, outdoor display areas shall be limited to those for display of vehicles for sale as approved by the Plan Commission part as part of the site plan review process. D, no storage of flammable or hazardous materials except those minimum quantities necessary for the operation of the permit, permitted, permis, permitted principal use. This is in regards to the, uh, the service center area. And E, hours of operation shall be between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. seven days per week. Subsection uh, 9B, no pole signs, pennant flags, light pole flags, permanent banners, or flashing or blinking signs shall be permitted as part of this development. Window sh signs shall not cover more than 25% of the window on which they are placed. This is a standard code requirement. And all signs must be approved by the plan commission as part of the site plan review process. Under 10, just establishing that the permitted use is one automobile sales and service facility with outdoor storage limited to vehicle inventory and usual and customary accessory uses to the automobile sales and service facility, which includes one private car wash facility. These are the areas that I would like, that I wanted to draw your attention to. With that, the staff recommendation is that the Plan Commission recommends that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit, allowing automobile sales and service and a car wash on the properties at 7008, 7018 South 27th Street, and 2500 West Robin Rawson Avenue after a public hearing and subject to conditions and restrictions. Mr. Mayor. Just looking at the first or the last paragraph on the front page of the report. So can one of you walk me through the the Riverwood Boulevard extension does not line up. Thank you, Mr. Degner. The Riverwood Boulevard extension does not line up as originally proposed. The applicant does not want to see that extension put through their property, I'm assuming. So I'm going to ask Commissioner Johnston to help me out on a, on a few details. But essentially, the officially mapped road pattern shows that the uh, the extension would go through the east side of the property and then continue east and north. Based on some discussions with WISDOT, um, about 2008-ish, 2012, I apologize, the 
proposed change would actually curve to the west and meet up with 27th Street. So that's not reflected on our officially mapped street pattern um, as on the location map in front of you. There are some issues with the presence of wetlands in that pro proposed area on the applicant's property. So, um, in, in, in what sense? The original proposal or the extension back to 27th Street? Both. both? Yes. Okay. So that's an issue that would um, be up for discussion. Also, the um, potential for that connection to actually occur all the way to 27th Street. My understanding is that previously there had been some discussions with some property owners that the proposed road layout would affect as well. Um, and I think at least one of those property owners not in agreement with the proposed road layout, so the road extension was never actually constructed. Has the applicant thought about just melding the two, the one, the proposed roadway with where they have, in, in this sketch, they have created their opening for their, kind of their driveway? Would it be possible to just put those two things in the same place so that if there ever was a future extension, given all the, re, all the, issues with that extension, at least we would have the, that part of it completed. I have not had that conversation with the applicant, no. Okay. I mean, that's something to consider. Did you have a question? Do you have the map? That, can you show the map that, that we have? We got it. We got it. Thanks. <clears throat> I have to think that creating a driveway opening would be somewhat similar to creating, a, you know, not, not exactly the same, but a roadway opening at some point in the future. So if we could move it slightly east, I don't know how many feet that is, but it might accomplish, given that we're not going to be putting this roadway in, at least we could accomplish the same thing. So, oops, you had it there for a second. Yeah, I'm going to open a different version of it. Do you have a pointer down there? All right. Hmm? Just so you can just show the audience what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, you can see with the mouse. Okay, so, so this area right here is the proposed entrance off of Rawson Road, mm -hmm. and the agreed change to the proposed road to connect up to 27th Street is following my cursor here, curving around to 27th Street to meet up with the existing Riverwood Boulevard that is in Franklin. The officially mapped street pattern shows that it's slightly over to the east for the entrance, goes north, and then follows along east to this neighborhood. Yeah, I'm fine with the shift west at the beginning. I'm just saying line up, put the mouse on where they're going to put their, their driveway. No, west of there. That's their drive. That's what they're talking about, right? That's their driveway? That's the proposed driveway. Okay, why don't we just shift that driveway to where the proposed future roadway is, and then we at least have that opening in place if we need to ever do that. It's right here. See it? And Brian, what do you think? I think the I think the road should be put in across her property. To the north to the, property to the line? property line, yes. So you, would you, okay, so even if we did that, you'd be building a roadway straight. Are you saying the original proposed route? No. The, the curved route? The curved route back out to 27th Street. So you're suggesting they build the entire roadway? Just to their north property line. Well, that, it straddles the line the whole way on the north side, doesn't it? They're not building it all the way out to 27th Street. They construct up from Rawson north to their north property line. <clears throat> yep, right there where the cursor is. And then their driveway, I would have tie into this new road. All right, so you're an engineer. Is, what is the likelihood that this roadway is going to be put in at some point, given these wetland issues? Are they significant? Are they not significant? In the drawings we had with the state, the wetlands were off to the east side of it from where the road was being proposed. So they yes, there are a lot of wetlands on this property, but the wetlands were to the east of where the road was being proposed. Go ahead. But the road is being proposed right up to the rear end of this 
basically uh, the farthest you got homes in your backyard. I mean, you're only that road's only 20, 30 feet off the farthest west county. Uh, it's a little bit further than that. There is a um, floodway that comes down through there, and there's a, a channel. I believe it's 60 feet, roughly, that comes through there in that west. 60 foot from the west house, and this road doesn't touch that land. Is that worth referenced? That's my question. Historically, what have we done with properties of this size? Have we, we insisted that the roadway be built? Yes. What's the, who's, the, who's the applicant here? Come on up. Name and address for the record. Jerry Cousin, 1597 30th Court, Kenosha. Your position on the roadway is what? Um, if it's an absolute requirement that DOT, I guess, I guess I'll guess i back up a second. My understanding and, and some other conversations is that the funding for the road from DOT to continue the road um, isn't there, and there may not be a, a desire by them to finish the road. Um, so we're trying to set up a meeting at Doug's suggestion with DOT to see how viable um, their the continuance of that is obviously if they have no intention of building that other extension that goes east to west then um, i don't know that we'd you know like to have to spend the money to build the north to south part when did you have that conversation with doug Seaman? um just before the june 14th meeting okay ryan is that your understanding um my understanding is i do not believe there's any money at this time with the dot um the agreements we had in place previously have all gone away because they were going to construct this road with the 27th street project Okay. I'll go back to my original thought. Why can't we have the applicant connect his driveway to that spot so at least we have an opening there for a future roadway if at some point we decide to do that and there is funding available? And in the future, is the city going to pay for that? Or, that, the, that's or the DOT. That's typically where we've gone with these because the city can't continue to fund all these projects. No question, because this is this is probably about a half a million dollar road, I'm yeah. guessing. So we, we've put it on the developers of those to extend the roadways and public infrastructure across their property. And then when the road is connected up by the developers to the north, they continue it on. And Let me ask you this, Brian. Uh, all the property directly east of the proposed car lots back park uh, inventory lot, is any of that developable? along that proposed road. What's the chances of that ever becoming, let's just say, multifamily or anything like that? Yeah, a good portion of that is developable. I really wish we could see the wetlands. Yeah. My understanding, if I can interject, is that about two to two and a half acres of the land east of where our our property where we're proposing the car dealership is non-buildable because as we've... As we've hold, on, hold on one second. Usually I don't let people yell from the audience, but I will ask the question from, I'll ask the question. Is there any way we can get a map that shows wetlands or, is, or they have not been delineated officially? They've not been delineated yet. Um, okay. We can show where um, the, count, the DNR believes that there are p the potential for wetlands on the property, but the site delineation, correct me if I'm wrong, has not been done on this property yet, or an updated delineation, I should say. So essentially, we'd just be looking at an overhead picture of what it looks like. But we'd be looking at where DNR believes there right. could be wetlands, but they haven't done a site assessment either. So the the applicant's saying you don't you don't wish to put the road in. I understand it's a financial situation, but if if if, if historically we've insisted that developers developers that in, that do large projects have to put the roadway in that's that's created on the official map. I don't think we'd have an issue with if that roadway was reserved that at our if the roadway was going to be built completely that we had to dedicate it and contribute our part. I just don't know that it would be financially viable for us to do it up front if the roadway is never connected and it never serves a purpose because then we've just wasted the money. So could we do it by special assessment once the road goes in? Minus the homeowners. 
it has an advantage to it. I don't mind saying if it's ever finished, it has an advantage for us as well. Sure. It yeah. just has a disadvantage for us if we spend the money and it never Yeah, although never there's ends. an outlay of cash, you, you would benefit from that roadway if at some point it was it, connected. It, it was connected, but it, we don't benefit from it if we spend half a million dollars and it never comes to fruition. Right. I think at the minimum, we've got to get that, the driveways matched up. It just seems like a no-brainer to me. At least build the driveway so that it, it's suitable for a future expansion of that. Go ahead. I do agree with the mayor. I, I think the driveway should align. I'd actually like to see them farther west off to give the homeowners some relief off of that. And even if you had a bring it back east a little bit, what well, what would be the difference if he put in the driveway in a small cul de sac? That could be expanded one day. And then if those properties to the east get developed, you'd do a shared special assessment. How is that on the carry to explain to me why or why? I'm not qualified to, to say that, actually. I would want finance to make that determination. Because again, the road's only necessary if the development's there. Right, right. but I'm not, I'm not qualified to say what the special assessment process is. Oh, okay. So you're, you're saying that you would be willing to match that driveway, correct? I don't think we have an issue with that, no. Okay, and you would... Would you stipulate that if at some point funding was available for the roadway from DOT, you would pay your share of the- Our share of it to get the road through our property. Is there going in a financial, go ahead. I guess my question is how can we, uh, how would that be handled or you could dedicate that land or keep an easement on there, but how do we special assess or get them to commit to that? I, yeah. I mean, I can't see spending the money, but there's got to be. Right. A... I mean, in the end, it goes on the property's owner and footage. You do have to have consideration for a developer who, you, you, essentially, if you insist on the roadway, you're having them put a roadway in that may never be connected to anything. That would be a waste of Makes money. Makes no sense. So I think we have to, we should find a, a reasonable compromise. And I think matching of driveways is one. And two, having some sort of stipulation beyond this meeting, because I think ultimately that will be decided by council anyway. It says if at some point it is connected, they're on the hook for that. That they're part of the roadway. Seem fair? It, um, just one suggestion: uh, possibly uh, the development agreement that we typically use. Um, maybe we can use that as you know, a binding document. That if this does go through, there's a special assessment in there that goes back to this property, sure. and then that's recorded. That that sticks with it. Works for you. But then match up the driveways or some sort of MOU or whatever makes okay. sense. I mean. Right. And, and the right of way would be dedicated with the CSM at this time for that road to go through. Okay, so I think we can have staff come to some workable agreement on those issues since the applicant's in agreement. And, and it seems like the plan commission is. Yes. Okay. Now let's all tackle the other other uh, list of things that, that Carrie <laughs> highlighted. The big one. Because uh, we're not going to solve that one tonight. <laughs> but I think we need to talk about that. Okay. Because Fair enough. Historically, we have insisted that that roadway be constructed, but there are some special circumstances here that I think warrant not just putting it in for the, for the hell of it. All right, uh, I'll open up to the commission and they can tackle any issues that they want to bring up. Commissioner Seeper. Yeah, I have a question about damaged or re cars that are being repaired. Do you have a body shop in this facility? We do not. We have um, no intention of having a body shop, not something okay. I've had. So then you do. don't have to worry about any no, damaged cars? No, not unless it's something that uh, we own that got damaged that we would be sending to a body shop. Okay. Commissioner Dickman. I wanted to just talk about that, uh, those garage doors or loading docks. I think, Carrie, you said there was going to be something special done with the doors so they don't look like garage doors or something, or maybe you could, you know, cover that a little more. Treat, well, you used the word treatments, didn't you? Or treatment. You, well, correct. And without getting too much into site plan review, because that's actually yeah, beyond the scope right. of this review, it's more along the lines of, is the commission comfortable with the potential for overhead doors to be facing 27th Street? There are some treatments, as I mentioned, that the applicant and I have had conversations regarding, and it's a matter of whether or not the plan commission would <coughs> allow such a thing, um, or is this something that would not be allowed, and therefore, prior to site plan review, the applicant would have to modify the plans. Would there be any examples of treatments that uh, we could look at by driving somewhere for you know as an example what they might do, do you, i don't know if you know of any or, or pete if you know of any or the applicant 
or the applicant? Actually, if you go to the Honda store that we currently own on 27th Street. Um, I, I'm sorry, where? The Honda dealership, All Star Honda, on 27th Street that we currently own at the intersection of College and 27th. Oh, that's cool. um, our service doors right now face the street, but those service doors are all glass. So okay. if the doors aren't elevated up or um, in the process of moving, it actually looks probably more like pain showroom glass as opposed to a metal overhead garage door or loading dock door. So um, visually, when the doors are closed, which they'll obviously be unless a car is coming in or out, um, it, it looks like pain glass as opposed to, um, you know, looking like a metal overhead door that could rust or, you know, just look. I mean, that um, seems workable to me. I mean, at some point, you're going to have to have the, the doors facing some direction. I guess the only, probably the only unobjectionable direction would be north. Because you'll see them on Rawson, you'll see them on, the, the homeowners will see them to the uh, east, kind of. If you put them on the back end. Actually, there's homeowners on the other side, too. On the north side, they would see them, too. So I think if they look like windows versus doors, I think you could probably get away with that. Go look at it. Thank you. Alderman Bikavich? A um, couple of comments. I did have a, a resident contact me, and they, they basically live on Cedar Street in Rawson. And again, it's, it's one of our really uh, jewel-type neighborhoods. It's real tucked in there and protected. We want to be mindful of the neighbors, particularly with the hours in your listing, 6 to 6.30. Uh, when are you going to be using air tools? Will you have the doors up or down? Because it's going to carry. There's nothing between the back end of your place and that quiet little neighborhood. And you know, the sound of air tools early in the mornings on a day like today is going to carry. Um, they also had um, some questions regarding vandalism and fine. Uh, what's going to be the protection <laughs> thing? Do you do you patrol the lots, uh, lighting aspects, and and again, a legit is uh, traffic off Rawson Avenue. We discussed it a little bit with the street, and that's why I'd, I'd kind of like to see that street not be as far away from them homes as possible. So hopefully that would be as far west. But, uh, I'll let you address those. Comments. Okay, sure. Um, regarding uh, the air tools, our hours of operation, I think we had 6 to 10 set up in there. Our Honda store is currently open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, I think we, you know, the doors generally stay closed unless it's uh, the cars are coming in or out um, at that particular point. Obviously, with winter and all that, our techs don't really want those doors open anyway. Um, we get our busiest probably from the hours of 8 to 7, 8 to 8. Um, we are open there usually to receive cars mostly between at 7 a.m. Uh, the technicians get in at about 7.30, so we're not always um, doing those things. And most of the time, it's customer drop-offs and that sort of thing first thing in the morning. Late at night, it's about finishing up work and doing that. It's not that we're at our busiest. Our, our peak hours, like most other businesses, are going to be from about 8 to 6, 8 to 7. Um, regarding the crime and vandalism, uh, at our current facility, we have um, security cameras that are monitored um, off-site. Um, and, you know, they're on 24-7, so we'd have those available. And um, they have, you know, our Honda stores in Greenfield, they have direct connect with Greenfield Police. We've um, you know, had a situation or two where they've had to come out something looks suspicious so I think we're, we're there and the lighting will be um, adequate but also meet the desire to not over light um, to disturb the neighbors at the same time enough to provide security but not enough to um, you know, make you not go to sleep at night if you near, live nearby um, and then I think what was one more thing I forgot um, oh, the traffic issue I think it, if we had to draw our own ideal world we'd probably obviously be okay with still dedicating that one driveway for that road um, Probably ideally because it would help us from an expense standpoint, almost like that, the one proposed driver we have because that's where the access right now is allowed. We would be okay if it actually moved west and there were two. Um, the one for the proposed road as well as one that maybe more directly fit in since it's a right in, right out um, access anyway, that if it somehow met with your approval and the county's approval to move west um, on that and, and, and maybe minimize the traffic from the houses into our business. Yeah. And I'm, if the road I'm fine with that, if, as long as you, if you have both, that, that works too. I just know. think we need to make some allowance for the future. Right. It, you know, if, if it met with your approval, I think that obviously we'd have to get county approval for that as well, since that's a county road. But if, in DOT, if that met with everyone's approval, we'd be okay with moving that entrance more west and also dedicating, if we need to, for the road down the line so that it minimizes the traffic for our business on a day to basis, whether that road ever gets built or not, it minimizes the impact to the houses. 
right there. So, uh, will the east side of the lot be screened? Do you typically put up a fence to block your inventory, or is that you you wanted visible off ross? Um, the east side of it. I don't know that we would probably screen it off at this point. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen at some point, but I don't think that's in our plans. Thank you. Mr. Johnston. Um, just go back to the road for a minute. Um, the location is there because that is where it was approved by the county plan. And at the time of that approval, that was the end of the median for 27th Street. So that's the closest point that they could get a full access point. Uh, the left turn lane right in right out only if it was pushed to the west you know have to get and walk your farm through there if i understand it's actually only a right in right out access as it sits right now um, because we actually had a i don't mind saying a, um, someone approach us about some stuff and we we checked into that and there was no full access at this point allowed anyway so um that's you know why if unless i'm wrong and if we're wrong your point is keep the original it would just need to go back through Milwaukee County. Yeah. That, that's how it was set originally. Right. That that was the closest point that we could get a full access. And that's how we picked that point. Would we have to go back to county on, on if they kept their original roadway access and then we had the proposed entrance for a future road? Would we have to go back to county on that too? I believe so, yes. Okay. All right. Um, before I forget these, and then I'll go to this side. Um, any heartburn on the landscaping requirements, three-foot landscaping area? No. Uh, retaining walls must incorporate landscaping. I don't think we have any intention for it. Okay. Um, side of the building should be finished with aesthetic pleasing material. 75% of the visible perimeter should be finished with acceptable glass. Um, I think it was a glass, brick, or masonry, is that? Right. Yeah, I that one might. I stopped reading, um, but yesterday. Right. <laughs> yes. um, we we've got to work with. Um, obviously, it's a GM facility, and we have compliance issues that we need to meet with a certain image. There, um, they have recommended um, materials for that, and so some of those materials don't meet as it sits right now. So we'd have to work through the process with them as well as um, you guys, obviously, to make sure that everything fits in a way that makes sense and make what adjustments are necessary. Obviously, we'd be work willing to. Get that all figured out. So. Any heartburn on any of the issues that Carrie highlighted when she went through her introduction? Uh, there, there really wasn't, no. Okay. This side. Anybody? Mr. Dickman. Okay. Uh, I know we're not looking at a site plan this evening, just a general, but uh, what's the relationship of the car wash in relationship to the main building? Is that a separate building it's going to be? Is it part of the building? Um, we're actually, it'll have its own separate doorway in and out, but um, it should be attached and adjacent to the building. It actually, um, I'm looking at the way that that site plan is set up, I believe we have it set up on the back side of the building. Right oh, oh, that's it back there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the hours of, of that would be the same as the business because I, I'm assuming that when somebody brings their car in for service, <coughs> one of the uh, pluses is that you can have your car washed. Before Absolutely. You okay, or a few. Right. Okay. Mr. Johnson? Um, Gary, I didn't see anything in here about uh, displays. Uh, did we look at limiting the number of displays? No, we didn't limit the number of displays because this is still considered a concept plan. So I think that's something that you could definitely discuss during the site plan review. And I know that the, I've had some conversations with the applicant and their consultants about where the display areas would make most sense. Uh, some of those display areas, as shown on the concept plan, may cause some issues for traffic. So we have had a, those initial conversations, but um, at this point, I think that's best left at site plan review. Anybody else? Commissioner Carrillo. How are you feeling about the CCTV? Now? Yep. Um, what about um, 9B with the signs, the pennants? I would assume that's something that you would use on the um, for sales and things like that. And it's kind of actually situation. the way that. Um, Carrie and I had a discussion, I guess the analogy I used is um, the way that I've typically run a business and the way that we market, we're way more Nordstrom than say, you know, Kmart or you know, flea market sale. So I don't think anything that we do is not gonna be anything tacky. We, we don't use signs now, we don't have 
flying banners. We don't have any of that stuff at our. We don't at have our the inflatable guy. With we don't have any of that. The <laughs> so, um, so I don't think that's a, a yeah. concern. Okay. So, I've got two residents who wish to speak on this. Chuck Wentz. Name and address for the record. Chuck Wendt, uh, 2224 West Cedar, which is right at the end of the dead end on 22nd Street. So I've got some questions and some concerns. Uh, that I guess the biggest concern that we have is that uh, about changing the zoning on the by behind the houses on Rawson and next to our houses on, on Cedar there. Um, Right up to the edge, you know, it's a very quiet and safe single family residential neighborhood. You know, we're concerned that that could open up the door to future development or expansion because if you change the, the zoning, then the biggest hurdle is done there, at least in my mind, uh, for other development. You know, we see development where they're building right up next to wetlands and, you know, commercial right next to our neighborhood wouldn't be great for us. Um, so, you know, basically I'm asking what solutions would be available to protect the wetlands in, in the neighborhood and our neighborhood directly. Uh, and I have a, you guys have a, something from Grafe that shows where they mapped out or they, they put the, the wetland area that, you know, it's, it looks like that road, perhaps not so much on this property here, but on the next property is, that's all wetland there. And right next to our house, and going through the middle of that section, is that all right if I just point to it, is all wetland. You gotta stay on the mic. You gotta stay on the mic. There's, I, there's no dispute, we, we understand there's wetlands there. What, what's the point of that statement? Well, I mean, business development right next to a, a residential neighborhood that's quiet, dead end street. You know, there's our whole neighborhood has some concerns about that. I'm sure the people that live on, on Ross and you know, wouldn't appreciate they got busy Rawson and now we got businesses behind our, our, our uh, you know, residential property. So normally that's in most communities, that's not how. Well, this proposal doesn't suggest that there's going to be development. I understand so it's that. It's kind of outside the scope of this. Well, you're changing the zoning on the entire property, though. I mean, why does the whole property have to be zoned for business, for B4? I mean, that last section. You know, that, that little L part there, why does that have to be business? Some of my other questions would be, you know, I think there was touched on as far as the lighting, how long that's left on and how it's going to affect the neighborhood, the noise, and then uh, I'm having a hard time understanding what the benefit of the proposed Riverwood Boulevard round uh, uh, there, and, and would that be a, a right in, right out road as well? So it wouldn't impact the traffic where people are stopping, waiting to turn left. Okay. And uh, then about the rash of robberies that are happening, what's being done to prevent car thieves from, from uh, driving recklessly after stealing a car in the neighborhood. Thank you. Peter, Kerry, you want to weigh in the zoning question or no? Go ahead, Kerry. As far as having multiple zoning on a property, it's it makes it very difficult for anything to meet the zoning code. And I, while I fully understand and respect uh, Mr. Wentz's comments, the treatment of the property as more than one zoning is always problematic. Um, this was the best solution for um, for getting properties all under one zoning. Um, it's something that we can look at as far as where would that line go. Uh, we would need a revised legal description that would cut off the rest of it. Um, and then there are setback requirements, again, that would prevent, uh, or not prevent, it would actually uh, potentially impact some of the development on the remainder of the property, whether or not it would be Significant, I couldn't say. It depends on where that line would be. Uh, Mr. Degner, Arden Degner. Uh, 
Arden Degner, 8540 South Pennsylvania Avenue. I am surprised. I recall just a dozen years ago, the Plant Commission refused to allow Gregor Chevrolet to extend their car dealership. They were going to purchase. I, I don't know, a large amount. Now, the idea has changed. We're going to allow anybody that has any idea. First of all, I'm not sure what the story is, where that gentleman had a, had a uh, wetland delineation map. With this... Uh, questions that are raised with not only the uh, zoning but the uh, road location, it would seem appropriate to have a wetland delineation map available for the Planned Commission to decide how this, as the owner mentioned, how this is going to be developed and where if, if this wetland is going to stay, if it's going to be filled in, because it, this whole situation is not that simple in, in this area. And in fact, uh, the other item, uh, as you probably realize, uh, this is 27th Street. We had that, <laughs> all kinds of proposals on 27th Street. And in fact, it's still in the mix with Franklin. We haven't this, we haven't discarded it with Brexel Town Square. So why are we allowing a, another car dealership? As you saw that list on supposedly a, uh, a uh, upscale 27th Street. I, I would say this has to be held until we get some... Uh, some settlement on these other development issues, including a, a sidewalk on Ross and Avenue. Thank you. Carrie, in, in this proposal, is any of the area where they're going to develop impact wetlands at all? Not to my knowledge, the proposed road, potentially. Um, other than that, the, future the buildings, road. the... The buildings are off to the west, in which case the... They wouldn't be impacted by the wetlands now. Um, I believe that the wetland has been preliminarily identified. I don't know that it, a full delineation has been done. I mean, I, the applicant can correct me. Um, there is a location for their stormwater pond that may be butting right up to that wetland area. So I don't know if there have been wetlands identified on the part that will not be developed. But the part that will be developed. It's closer to 27th Street. Yeah, I see that. So that, that's not so impacted the by wetlands. Are, the wetlands are more on the east half. So essentially we're talking about a, a roadway that may never happen and its impact on a, on a wetlands area and any potential development that could ever happen in an area that's also wetlands. I can show you what the preliminary outlook or what the preliminary site plan looks like, but again, it's preliminary, it's concept, it's kind of outside the scope of the rezone and conditional use. Let's just look use. at it. This line, roughly here. That's basically what I thought it looked like. All right. Anyone on the commission have any heartburn? Uh, Christian Mary Corral. I guess the, the one comment to uh, the residents concern, you know, looking at that lot, uh, split zoning doesn't seem to make sense. I'm hard pressed to figure out what would go there other than some type ultimately of extension of this business, which I would think we would require the road finished and a lot of other things to fall into place. I just don't know what commercially you know, there's a couple of other lots in the city. I'm thinking on Drexel behind Wendy's and the bank over there with the neighborhood. And that's sat for a long time, and that's more buildable than than this. So I respect your concerns. I just don't know what in the world could go there commercially. Sure, Dickman. Except for uh, Cedar Street, that piece of land, if it was you know, zoned differently, could almost be landlocked if you look at it. 
and so therefore, I, I think the uh, odds of building anything back there are, are you know, not very high. I tend to agree with you. Um, on this item, any other comments from the commission? Just one last one. Go ahead. You know, just directly west of that cul-de-sac and directly north of them homes, it's my memory from the few times I've been down there and visited people, um, I think a lot of wetlands and marsh are right at the end of that cul-de-sac. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to be buildable either way. And if anything was developed, I would encourage it just on the west side of the road if they Buffer. Again, um, it's a long ways off. So, from that ever happening, I just don't see anything east of that road really being worth building. I just, I just don't see it. So, but I may not be here in that time. <laughs> and I guess the last comment to the other residents concerned on the 27th Street. Um, you know, we've been sitting on 27th Street for years and years and years um it's a new development i, I it's an extension of what's on 27th street with the uh, car dealer so i really don't have a problem with the use on 27th street. we also don't have any car dealers currently in the city other than some small used car lots mr mayor yes on your screen right now is the uh the county mapping program that shows the potential location of wetlands as dnr considered them there's also a, a drainage that would have to be you know maintained and and there would be a lot of things that would actually be very um difficult to uh, you know kind of get around or work with if they were to develop all the way over on the east side so i for what it's worth this is where dnr thinks there could be wetlands and drainage uh, it appears that the preliminary data from the applicant's submission would indicate that the wetland may have expanded even further west, which would prevent um, or at least hinder more development on that east side. Yeah, for the purposes of this item, this map doesn't give me any, any more concern because I don't see that as impacting anything that we're talking about with this item. The roadway, I think, is highly unrealistic. Yeah, things change over time. I'm, in this current time frame, I don't see that roadway going to go in, given these challenges. I do think that that's a good use. Their proposal is a good use of the land, which would be um, directly on 27th and, and, the, and the corner on the Ross on Ross in there. And I certainly would like to see 7070 go by. So. I was going to say, and they're willing to, adjacent to that property, and everyone was going to have to. We yeah. haven't been able to draw somebody to that land. I think it's a good use. Yeah. So oh, that's another whole issue. So I have no concerns beyond that. Um, any other comments? Alderman Guzikowski. I was just going to say, especially looking at this map, you know, the wetlands are give me hope, uh, if if you will, that there's probably nothing going to happen on that side of the property and on the west side. I'm sorry, the east side of where the land would go through. Um, the guidelines for the 27th Street overlay, um, these meet all of the guidelines that are in place. I, Carrie. Well, the guidelines for the 27th Street overlay relate more to, I think, site and architectural. Um, but where we saw that they would be incorporated into the conditions and restrictions, um, they've been identified. Okay. So mostly under section six A, it's mentioned. Okay. And then with the uh, the one thing that you would have to address in the conditions and restrictions is on page six of nine, which would be I. Um, but it looks like there's already been language that's uh, thrown in here that would allow the plan commission to modify that at site plan review. And the applicant has expressed willingness to work with us on that. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, a motion. Motion. Got to mention anything about the road, or do we deal with that any other time? Oh, I think it's part of the development agreement, as Brian mentioned. Fill out a sheet. Come on up. I like you, so I let you come up without further ado. <laughs> Ed Lasowski, I like you right now. <laughs> Ed Lasowski, 6988 South 27th Street. Been a resident of Oak Creek for since 1960, before that. So before we were a city, I was a resident. 
So even before 1960. So anyway, I'm concerned. I own that property, 6988. It goes all the way back to Cedar, from 27th Street all the way back to Cedar, and abuts Cedar. And I'm concerned that uh, the, 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 the flooding of that area even worse. You know, I'm glad we sort of took care of that theater, but it's parking lot and everything was flooding at that time, but you put a sewer in there, now they put a drain in there, so it doesn't drain as much over on my property. Over, like in the winter time, the snow, it start melting, and my property would just flood that whole area. You know, it would make it worse than it is. So I'm concerned, Mr. Bukavich, I'm concerned that uh, this uh, area here would become even more of a flood than it is. I think you have a, a legitimate concern, definitely. Um, I guess the one thing we can say is before anything goes in with the condi conditions and restrictions, when they come back, they have to meet um, a flood plan. plan and there's usually a retention storm 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 water. stormwater sewer stormwater. plan. So usually a development like this, although I don't see it here because it's conceptual, I think it would include a retention. Retention right. pond? Where would that retention pond be developed? I, I do not know because that's above my pay grade. That would be a, an engineer such as this guy. So actually, <laughs> the, I have the concept plan up on the screen right now. So the... It doesn't have the pond on it, the, this particular sheet, but it would be in this area here. In the area that's already wet, kind of, right? Adjacent to the wetness. Adjacent to it. Right. Keep in mind, when we, when we put things in, we try to make it better than, <coughs> than nature intended. Yes, put it that way. Nature intended? We try. <laughs> we try, because sometimes we actually make flooding situations better than what exists currently by developing the land, putting in the restrictions for either curb and gutter or a culvert, or in this case, a, a retention. That's the intent anyways, our best intent. Okay, where would the retention pond be located? Just she, 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 see the big... She, she's the kind screen. of doing a circle up on the screen there. Kind of directly Adjacent east to of their lot. parking. So it'd be on their property. Oh sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's that's not very low in that area, though. They got to build. That's it. not low in that area. Well, they got to figure they that out. Build that's it that that's way. the idea. Because that's higher there. That's why the water drains over to Cedar Street. You know? but it's got to be engineered to work that way. That's, that's what these guys are paid to figure out. Paid big bucks to figure out. Big, some, big what? Big dollars. Some may say over That's for the engineers to figure out, but that's where the stormwater pond is going to be. That's where the water has to go once it's in its design. That's how its design will work. It's not on your property. So I think it's going to, your situation actually should improve. It should improve. It should. Improve. Yeah. It, it should. Because I know you'll yell if, you, if it doesn't. So. You betcha. Yeah. But you know, that's higher than. They have to figure that out. Brian, do you have a. We haven't seen any plans yet, so I don't I'm know just what they're talking about. It. We're not to that stage yet. Wow. That's what engineering does. Well, my concern is that engineering, so he says, well, we can't do it, so we got to flood that in my area then. There's not many things no. they can't figure out. No, it's part of the plan and part of the process here, so once we get to that point, that's where they'll have to put all that in place to make sure this doesn't happen. If it doesn't work, it stops. All right. What? It'll stop if it doesn't work. They've got to figure it out. Cool. Good. Thank you. Have a good, good night. <laughs> All right, motion on 5A. Corral moves that the commission recommends that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit, allowing automobile sales and service and a car wash on the properties at 7008-7018 South 27th Street and 2500 West Rawson Avenue after a public hearing and subject to conditions and restrictions. Seaford seconds. Roll call. Hickman, aye. Dunstan, aye. Rillo, aye. Ava Chai. Speedy Eye. Kizikowski. Corella. Secret Eye. Go forth, gentlemen. All right, 5B is conditions and restrictions review for a conditional use permit request for a self storage facility submitted by Kelly Gallagher, Self Storage Ventures LLC, on the properties located at 6304 and 6340 South Hall Avenue and 137, 147, and 209 East College Avenue. 
Tax key number is 719-9991-001, 719-9990, 719-9992, 719-9993, and 719-9994. Carrie. Thank commissioners. So I will recall that this also was recommended for approval at the June 14th meeting. If we can go through the proposed conditions and restrictions starting on page 3 of 9. Subsection I, a certified survey map combining the properties shall be prepared and submitted to the City of Oak Creek for review and approval and shall be recorded prior to the issuance of any building permits. Under 3A, parking and access. Parking for, for the project shall be provided as follows. One <coughs> stall per employee, a minimum of five dedicated parking stalls at the sales and leasing office as proposed. Sufficient space for parking one vehicle in front of all ground level storage units and all other, par other parking shall be in, in accordance with municipal code. Section G, all off street parking areas with the exception of parking in front of storage units shall be landscaped in accordance with municipal code requirements. Section I, access to East College Avenue is subject to the review and approval of Milwaukee County and such approval shall be provided prior to the issuance of city per permits. Access to South Howell Avenue is subject to the review and approval of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation and such approval shall be provided prior to the issuance of any city permits. On page 5 of 9, section D, landscaping adjacent to buildings, there shall be a minimum three foot landscape area provided between the edge of pavement and the entrance elevations of the perimeter buildings along College Avenue and Howell Avenue. Any retaining walls in section H must be incorporate landscaping as part of the design. On page 6 of 9, Section M, landscaping shall be in installed in accordance with the signed development agreement. Under 6C, the facade of a manufacturing commercial office institutional park building shall be finished with an aesthetically pleasing material with a minimum of 75% of the visible perimeter being finished with an acceptable glass brick or decorative, decorative masonry material. 6H, no overhead garage doors or loading docks may face residential properties or public streets. That's the last part of Section H. On page 7 of 9, Section 7 is a detailing the <coughs> proposed building and parking setbacks for this proposal. Under Section 8C, there shall be no outdoor storage or display of any kind, including but not limited to merchandise, materials, equipment, or vehicles. Section D, there shall be no storage of flammable or hazardous materials. And Section E, hours of operation shall be between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., seven days per week. Under Section 9, signs, no pole signs shall be permitted as part of the development. A sign easement shall be provided at the northwest corner of the properties for the benefit of the City of Oak Creek. As part of the required landscaping plan, the applicant shall, in coordination with city staff, present plans for the design of an entry, entrance gateway sign and landscaping within this easement. The initial construction cost of the signage shall be the responsibility of the owner. A separate agreement shall be entered into between the property owner and the city identifying maintenance responsibility for the sign and landscaping within the easement. Under Section 10B, the permitted use is one self-storage facility with now no outdoor storage of, or display. Page 8 of 9, under other regulations, B, Building permits must be issued to both buildings A and B as illustrated on the Exhibit A concept site plan prior to the issuance of building permits for any other storage structures which are identified as building type C. Occupancy permits must be obtained for buildings A and B as illustrated in Exhibit A concept site plan prior to the issuance of occupancy permits for any other stor storage structures identified as building type C. It shall be the responsibility of the owner to secure any required variances to develop, <coughs> to develop the site in accordance with plan commission approvals, as well as Board of Zoning Appeal approvals. Structures built on these properties may require the review and approval of the Federal Aviation Administration in Milwaukee County. It is the applicant's responsibility to secure said approvals. <coughs> with these conditions and restrictions, the staff recommendation is that the plan commission recommends that the Common Council adopt the conditions and restrictions as part of the conditional use permit, allowing a self-storage facility on the properties at 6304 and 6340 South Howell Avenue and 137, 147, and 209 East College Avenue after a public hearing and subject to conditions and restrictions. Mr. Mayor. And the applicant and the representative of the applicant is here to um, address any concerns or questions. Any 
heartburn with any of the things that was highlighted by Gary. And as I always ask, name and address for the record. Civil Engineer Matt Clementi, 12075 Corporate Parkway, Mequon. Attorney Brian Randall of Freebird Finnerty in St. John, 330 East Milwaukee, excuse me, East Kilbourne Avenue in Milwaukee on behalf of the applicant. And Matt came up here too fast. I was going to introduce him as our big bucks engineer on the project. <laughs> Testify it is big bucks for this engineer. Kelly Gallagher, I'm the applicant. I live at 3114 East Hunters Ridge Way, Heber City, Utah. Okay. So the items that um, raised your eyebrow? A few items, and actually, I, I prepared a handout. Um, to begin with, thanks to Carrie uh, for working with us in advance. I think she was out of the office last week, so Pete filled in and sent along. We have a couple of proposal, proposed condition amendments, and I did what I call a red line document in the honor of uh, Independence Day coming up. Uh, the strikeouts, the things to change are in red, but then we have blue as an underline, the additional language. And I'd like to just walk through them and, and remind uh, the commission which ones we're fine with. So the very first one is 3A, little a, b, c, and d. We've talked about parking. I think the commission last meeting did uh, indicate the ag agreement to waive the overall parking requirement, which per code would be 900 parking spaces because we have 900 units. So letter C, we've just suggested that where we have a an exterior loaded unit, which are all on the inside of the site. I don't know if you by chance, Carrie, have the site plan to pull up uh, handy. Yeah, that would be great. So on the inside of the site is where these locations would be, and we, we will have parking near each one of those doors, but we'll also have entrance doors to the second story buildings and the interior units. So we just think that's maybe a cleanup opportunity to clarify um, that we will have sufficient space for the ground level units and where the internal unit entrance doors are. We don't propose to stripe the parking lot all over the place. It just naturally works itself out. Of course, on the northeast corner, that's where the five striped uh, dedicated parking stalls are for the sales and leasing office and we will also accommodate at the site and building plan stage the employee space is probably inside the fence somewhere and we will stripe those uh, so and, and i'd be happy to pause with any questions or respond at the end but 3j i just wanted to clarify on a second yes so the change does not change the number of parking stalls no we're showing the on the northeast corner the five striped uh parking stalls for the sales leasing office, and that, as Carrie indicated, was always part of the plan, and that's for someone who wants to come in to pay their bill or sign up for a unit in the first instance that's outside of our security gate, and, and Kelly can speak to this. We typically have 15 to 20 customer visits per day, so this is a low traffic generating and, and intensity use, so therefore the visitors we have are low in number, but the five spaces outside the fence will accommodate them, and then once you get on the inside, people pull up near where their unit is or that access door to go to the second story and they're typically there Kelly 20 minutes 30 minutes a typical customer duration of a visit so they park temporarily they run their stuff in they grab the things they bring out and they move along is this the first time staff seen this and I apologize we saw the conditions and restrictions last week and then we had a conference call yesterday, Kelly flew in today. So my thinking is, since this is a recommendation to the full council, the commission can certainly give its reaction, uh, but we can also continue to provide input to staff uh, during now and July 19th, because there's no uh, July 5th hearing. So again, apologies that I didn't send it to staff, but I literally, and I intended to print it two-sided to save a tree, uh, but I hit print when I came and it came out on two pieces of paper. Mayor, did we answer your question? We'll come back and get your input on these, but go ahead, keep going. So the first one was simply to clarify the parking. The, the 3J is on the southwest corner. We have what's marked as an emergency access gate. We've already sought full access from Wisconsin DOT, and they've said that will not be possible or not allowed on Howell. So we've shown what essentially is an optional emergency access gate. We just wanted to make sure that was clear that if we weren't able to have even that for some reason, which would have a breakaway or a key access, 
and so if we didn't have access that we wouldn't have to come back to the plan commission we're just trying to indicate that if we have access on Howell Avenue which I, the typo just caught State Highway 38 that of course is subject to DOT and if we can gain that we'll provide that to staff as part of the building permit okay 5D landscaping, as you can see, all around the perimeter of our site, we do have three feet and more landscaping. So I interpreted that, and, and Matt Clementi did speak with staff yesterday and perhaps last week. We don't have entrances to the public street facades. All of our entrances are internal. So I don't think we can achieve perimeter landscaping. I, I, I don't believe that's the intent of the code. So I just wanted to be clear that we will meet three feet and as I indicated more on all the exterior uh, ring landscaping but we also don't have perimeter e entrance elevations at those locations so it may not be a necessary strikeout but just wanted to make sure everyone's looking at the same site plan we don't have doors that was the number one thing uh, starting with Doug and, and other staff and Alderman Krukowski and the mayor said don't have the doors facing the streets so we don't have entrances to those locations Letter 6B, this is where uh, we seek some clarification and, and our conditional use submission and all of our plans all along indicated that we would have insulated metal wall panels and they're textured and that's why we do have a, a materials board. Matt, I'll ask you to hold that if you don't mind. Um, so we understand what the standard condition is and what we're trying to achieve. We have a, a self-storage facility and we have a combination of materials. And this really goes hand in hand with 6C, which is the 75% standard. What we'd like to show you is that we have the textured metal paneling on the, which is insulated on the exteriors of the buildings, of the main buildings along um, on college there. And that is a textured, you can touch it, feel it, we can show that to you. That's at about 57% of the total. We have 6% of the EFIS cornice, which is that material, and that's at the, the upper levels, and, but that is an EFIS material. And then we do have 37% of the rest, which as indicated, and I don't care if you have a shot of the elevations available um, that we can pull up from one of the last meetings. Uh, but that's 37% of a combination of glass, stone, and split face materials. So the proposal as we've presented is at those standards, and so we can't meet the 75% of the 6C, and so we suggest that the 35% would be achievable, and then we also want to just clarify that we will not have prefabricated non-textured steel panels on any of the buildings that are very close to the, the right of way. So that's where we are on design. It's again consistent with what we've always presented. We think it's an attractive palette of materials and uh, I appreciate Carrie pulling that up. I apologize I didn't bring the big boards because I knew you guys had such wonderful um, graphics here but here we are with a sample of the elevations which has the stone as you can see we have the cornice which is just that ribbon across the top we have stone at the at the base of the building we have the landscaping and the foreground the buildings essentially at the background but then we will have the textured uh, metal paneling as the main building pieces uh, on those facades are those panels joined are there, are there seams visible I will defer to no, we actually have a demonstration of one. Okay. You can scroll down and show us the, where the auxiliary structures are, not the main buildings, but all those. Yeah. Oh. Standalones, one, two, three, four. We don't have, these are just for the... Uh, yeah, there. that's the one I was looking for, that west-south portion. On the ends, yes. Those buildings will have what's called the R metal panel, and it's my understanding, Kelly, that the smaller buildings do not have the, the textured metal on the ends, correct? We're looking at the ends of the smaller buildings. But also the ends as they face the public streets, or did you have, this is the west elevation. So we're looking at the ends of these from Howell Avenue, is I think the alderman's question, correct? Correct. Uh, yeah, as you're going on Howell. Yeah, we'll that. stipulate that those buildings on the ends will accommodate uh, with the masonry components to give the same 
feel that the main buildings buildings have. And, and that is seen the at the bottom of, of that elevation. It's, it's there. It's just it's such a big site that it's right. a very small graphic. I just wanted to make sure it just wasn't steel panel on text. Correct. We don't. We have the landscaping in the foreground, and then the masonry and the ephus on the top of all of the buildings. All right. So I'm gonna have Carrie weigh in on some of the design proposals. You Thank you. Um, staff is not prepared to recommend approval of these without going for uh, some conversations that we need to have internally. Since we've just seen these, I can tell you that some of these would, uh, some of the proposals just at first glance are not uh, allowed per code. So uh, staff is not prepared to recommend approval of these at this time. Okay. You want to say anything more specific than that, or you just want more time? No, I, we need more time to review the proposal. I mean, past history has when an applicant uh, brings something to the plan commission, typically we give time for both staff and commission to have an opportunity to, to think about it, digest it, and be able to make a decision, not feel like we have been uh, surprised with something and rushed into a decision that, man, the surface sounds very good, but maybe after some additional thought, we can uh, have the discussion. And also, we'd like to discuss it with the applicant as well, so that way we can provide new renderings that can show you a better idea than a little one by one plastic piece of, of the material. So, so uh, look, looking at the nodding heads on the plan commission, I think we're going to have the applicants and the applicants reps talk with staff in the next few weeks and have these conversations and bring it back to us. Absolutely. I mean, we did not intend to surprise staff. Frankly, as we understood the process, site and building plan approval is the last. We're ramping up our submission for the end of July to go to the end of August, and that was the level of detail. We were as surprised as anyone to see the percentage standards and some of that because, as you can see on our plan, May 13th and earlier, these have been our plans. So we didn't surprise anyone by changing them, but as we then read Condition 6C and 75%, we asked the architect and the engineers to start crunching numbers to make sure we were all on the same page. So. We will. We've always been working with staff, and we will fully continue to do that. Yeah, no um, With whatever that process may be, whether the the plan commission can forward elements of it with certain things open or accepting the staff conditions, but allowing us to work with them as we go to council, we're concerned looking at missing a meeting date in July, and we've been at this since uh, really February when we first met with Alderman Krukowski, but. Certainly, we will continue to work with staff through now and July 19th, and then as we come through for site and building plan approval at the final stage. Right, and the only meeting we're missing in July is a council meeting. We have two plan commission meetings okay. in July. Yeah, so we're Great. fully fully um, scheduled for that. This board doesn't take off. Well, that's good. Yeah, we don't get off. Uh, if there's no other questions, I think we'll hold it till the uh, till staff and, and the applicant has a chance to talk. If it's all right, I'd like to address the final one, just sure, in ahead. the interest of putting it out there and if there is any feedback. Um, and before I do 12 C and D on my list, though, I wanted to point out 6H of the, of the staff report, we embrace, we're fine with no doors to the public streets, 7 and 12D on setbacks. That, I think, is, is simply an issue to flag for the plan commission. We are showing uh, setbacks at the old B4 standard of 25 feet for certain of our buildings. So we know that we will have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. It's my understanding through working with Pete that essentially the plan commission can approve us with this condition as stated at 40 feet, but with our plan showing 25 feet, that'll be the triggering event to allow us to have a, a denial or a non-compliance and then go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to, to make the case for the variance. So I just wanted to flag that. I think that's why that's there. And in particular, 12D staff put that in. So thank you to staff. That's a helpful condition for us. Um, eight, C and D, no outdoor storage, no vehicles, no hazardous or flammable materials. We're fine with that. That's exactly what our plan is all about. And paragraph nine, uh, the sign easement, as Kelly stated previously multiple times, we're going to put that sign in and we will work with everyone on how the future maintenance, but he has the money in the budget and that sign will go in. The final comment is on 12 C and D. Again, a new uh, set of conditions uh, that actually wasn't even in the first version that Pete was so kind to send out uh, last Wednesday. I think Friday I saw this in the packet. I think I understand what staff is saying, and and we can uh, accommodate that. Essentially, we're we're trying to avoid, or staff's trying to avoid. Can you put the A, B, and C plan back up, or at least one of the site plans? Staff wants to make sure, and the plan commission won't want this that. 
all of the six smaller buildings, single story in the back are built, and then we maybe take our sweet time to get to the larger buildings. And of course, that's not our intent. We have the office in the Northeast building here, so we're going to have to build that one. What we're proposing, and just the language there is, if for some reason we don't build both buildings A, which on the plan is the one on the corner, A and B at the same time, that we split it up, that if we go with B, which is more likely since that's where the office is, that we could build up to maybe three of the ones in back. If for some reason building A is lagging, that we wouldn't be able to do the full build out on the back site. And then the sister provision on occupancy, the same thing. Again, that's designed just because we build them doesn't mean we get to occupy them. And so we have that same kind of staggered. If we obtain occupancy for one of the bigger buildings, we could obtain occupancy for up to three of the other ones. And we added 180 days as simply a reality of construction. And Kelly could speak to that, that usually the smaller buildings go up quicker and we could have a temporary sales office, but the larger building may take three, six months to lag behind, but we will have that building permit as well. So there's always that triggering event. We think that's a, a carrot and stick, a good set of conditions in there. We just think it might take some massaging and we'll work with staff on that. But if Kelly wants to speak. Yeah, point of clarification is not to lag or to not, not build it. It's an issue also of space availability. So for example, when you build these facilities, you have certain size units. And then you have interior climate controlled and exterior non-climate controlled. So you want to accommodate the customers that come in to use it. By being able to build some of the smaller buildings, what's called Group C, that allows us to accommodate those customers coming in while we're finishing A and B. So that's why we were willing to put in the stipulation. We're, we're definitely building it. We just want to be able to provide product to our customers that are coming in instead of turning them away. Second point of clarification was I had to come to this meeting because my purchase and sale agreement requires me to make every effort whatsoever. So apologize for any surprise. It wasn't meant to be. It was meant to, for me to be able to go to my seller and say, we made every meeting so that I can garner extensions to accommodate what happened. I've said all along, I think this is an excellent use of a challenging site. I think we can get to where we need to get to, but I, I encourage you to work closely with staff in the next few weeks so that we can get there at the next next opportunity. So we'll hold 5B, um, pending conversations between applicant and staff. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, 5C is a plan review for site building, landscaping, lighting, and sign plan submitted by Pammy Lameda for a phase two of the plan, multi-tenant building development on the property at 7001 South Howell Avenue, tax key number 734-9028-000. Pete. Thank you. If uh, you recall, if you were on the commission back in 2010, the plan commission approved the site building and landscape plans for the first building, building one, located at 7001 South, Ave South A Howell Avenue. Uh, it's up on your screen right now. Uh, right now it is filled with medical and health uh, service type businesses. Right now, it w at that time, it was intended for this site to have two buildings. And they are at a point now where they would like to complete the development and actually have a second building set up. Uh, phase two of the building is the angled building on the western edge of the, of the property, in the darker, darker black area. This uh, multi-tenant building will be 10,800 square feet in area. It's anticipated to accommodate up to seven potential tenants. Uh, you may wonder why the building is on an angle compared to building one, which is parallel to Howell Avenue. Um, if you have been to the site, there are high tension wires that cut above that site. And so to not be regulated by the ATC easement, they actually kicked back the building. So that way the whole building was outside of that easement. So just to explain why it is on an angle, unlike the first building. The building does meet all of the setback requirements for the zoning district. Uh, the, mater the exterior material, material of the building will be finished with brick and aluminum panel accents similar to what was used on the first building. Uh, unlike the first building, this building won't have the metal awnings that stick out if you noticed if, when you drove by, uh, but instead they'll actually have a metal clad eyebrow over the entrances of the building. I can bring up a picture of that for you. Get an idea. So 
uh, there was awnings at the old one that stuck out much further than this one. They started the little eyebrows that are above each of the tenant spaces. Similar, but construction-wise, it is uh, different than building number one. Uh, the visible perimeter of the of the building meets the 75% exterior maintenance or exterior uh, requirements of brick, glass, and decorative masonry material. Uh, if you recall, on building one, the electrical meters were located on the north side of the building. And then we actually had to have the applicants screen them so you wouldn't see them as you were going southbound on Howell Avenue. Uh, in this particular case, since the building is kicked in a north northwest to southeast uh, orientation, if you can see where my little hand is on the north side there, that is where the proposed electrical meters are. So they're not proposing any type of screening similar to building one. Uh, it is located between the dumpster, which is also located north side of the building. Because of the anticipated use, uh, when the first time they came around, they expected to have retail, and it turned out that it turned into more of a medical health type facility and the health and human services. I don't know if that would be a good category. They have uh, you know, uh, an eye doctor, I think, a chiropractor in there. I think there's a salon, and I think we'll throw a lawyer's office for good measure so parking isn't as needed as anticipated as per code uh, for the b4 district so with building number two they will be having a total of 158 parking spaces which will provide 67 additional parking spaces than bef than before uh, included in your packet was a parking analysis that was explaining exactly why they felt that uh, the reduction in parking would be appropriate for this site. And as always, uh, the plan commission does have the authority to reduce the minimum parking requirement if they agree with uh, the applicant and satisfied by their explanation. As for the green space, it does meet the 30% meet the minimum green space requirement. They will have 39.9% green space. Uh, keep in mind that you know when they do this, when they did the site the first time around, the stormwater pond was designed to accommodate the second building so uh, they will have to modify their stormwater permit to reflect everything you know to update everything as now they know how building two is going to be laid out and parking is going to be so you know it will be need to be re reviewed and approved by the engineering department prior to building permits being issued as for landscape plan uh, the darker area is what is being proposed the, the lighter shaded gray area is what is existing uh, for the most part, it does meet the minimum requirements. There's only two points that I'd like to bring to the commission's attention, and that is on the southern border, there are parking stalls that go right up to the lot line that they would need to set that back and provide some screening as per code talks about providing uh, adequate screening for all perimeter parking. So I did talk to the applicant. They said that they could modify the, the parking lot uh, they would likely lose three parking spaces, so that would reduce it down to 155 or 154. And, um, and they would resubmit a landscape plan showing vegetation along that south lot line, so they would meet code there. Also, bring to your attention are the interior islands. We do require trees as part of the vegetation and the landscaping, but if you notice the dotted lines on going on an angle across the parking lot, that is where the ATC easement is. And there is a restriction that nothing over 20 feet can be placed there. So to put a tree, you'd be very limited of what kind of trees would go there. And if you had them shorter, you might have issues with visibility going through the parking lot. So when it was approved back in phase one, it was acceptable to have the, the low shrub vegetation there. And that's what they're proposing. And staff is comfortable with not having the, the trees there due to the ATC easement going through that, that section of the property. And let's see, the last thing. Oh, I'll show you the, well, I did show you the pretty uh, elevations. Okay. One thing I did include in your packet were their, uh, their signs, but their sign package, they will be coming at a later date for, for a sign plan. Uh, all uh, multi-tenant uh, buildings do need to have a sign plan in place and approved by the plan commission. And that'll be at a future date, probably most likely at the end of July, to discuss uh, the future plan because they will have to modify, in addition to uh, 
the wall signs for the tenant building would be their monument sign. Uh, the proposed monument sign, they look to add six new tenant spaces on top. Unfortunately, that jumps the height up to 11 feet, which exceeds sign code, and that's why they'll be coming back at a later date. They'll be looking for a sign appeal and for a sign plan review. So take a look at the request for that. Having said all of that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the site, landscape, and building plans for the multi-tenant retail development located at 7001 South Howell Avenue, subject to conditions one through five. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I remember when uh, phase one was proposed, and I think it was an alderman, we were questioning whether you wanted to build a building when there was no tenants, and you proved us all wrong. You built a great building, and you um, filled it up with good tenants. So well done. Um, to me, it's a great use of the property behind the current building, and I have very little, very little hesitation about any of the things that were proposed. Questions? Commissioner Chandler. I have a question for the applicant. Name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Peter O'Gorick. I'm an architect with Perspective Design, 11525 West North Avenue, Wauwatosa. It was noted there will be no screening or door for the dumpster area. Can you provide a little more information? About that? Um, the, the, there will be a dumpster enclosure uh, with matching materials to the building. That dumpster enclosure will have doors on the front of the dumpster. So um, I think what Pete was referring to was that that is actually providing screening to the electric and gas meters that are behind that. So I think that's what uh, Pete was referring to. So, um, so yeah, the dumpster will be fully in, uh, dumpster enclosure is fully enclosed, and it also acts as a screen to the mechanical equipment on the mounted on the side of the building behind it. Okay, thank you. Other questions, Commissioner Dickman. Not so much a question, but Pete, uh, I just want to compliment you because the questions I had were about the stormwater pond, whether we, you know, it could be used already. And secondly, whether the monument sign would be part of the sign package. So I guess you answered those, you know, completely. Good job. <laughs> oh, I go. Uh, my questions really, it's for Chief, uh, Assistant Chief Kresic, uh regarding fire. First of all, I like the layout of the building, believe it or not. I think it takes away from just that blank, repeat look. Um, takes away from the cookie cutter a little bit. But anyways, uh, hydrant placement, access to it, or do you go with fire pumps at each individual building? And I know there's sprinklers. But... It, it will be a uh, Mike Cressick Fire Department. It will be a sprinkler structure. I'd, I would say initially looking at the size of this, nowhere near the size required for a fire pump in that building. We would work um, with the applicant for site plan layout and hydrant placement throughout that structure. They already provided front frontage access as well as access, I believe, on the north side. Um, and there appears to be a sidewalk wrapping around the rest of the building. Any particulars or um, items that would need to be discussed on a smaller scale, we would work with the architect to address those. Okay. I just was wondering about the hydrant more than anything. I don't know where the nearest one is in that area. Hydrant placement can be tricky, and, and we like to work with the applicant to, to maximize the efficiency of it. We don't want too many hydrants in close proximity to each other. Uh, and we understand there's an economy with the spacing of that, so we'll work with the architect on that. Thank you. Well, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, just as a general note, um, some of the proposed grades on here are getting into the floodplain. We can just tweak those grades. It can be worked out in the final grading plan. Just to give you a heads up. Yeah, we're uh, civil engineers actually aware of that, so we're we're working on it. So, any other questions, Commissioner Chandler? Is there, uh, will there be movement between the two buildings? I know you have phase one already there with phase two. So will customers go from building to building? Um, I, I think potentially. Uh, you know, the we're expecting the same tenant mix that's in the first building to be in the second building. We are showing on the site plan uh, interconnecting sidewalk that goes from the rear building to the front building. Um, as much for people to get from their cars to the building as it is, you know, moving from building to building. Um, but, you know, we, you know, I think there's a potential that customers would move back and forth. The, the site is actually not that large, so that, you know, the parking lot is not, you know, huge. Um, so you wouldn't expect people to move their car if they were going from some place in the back building to a different business in the front. I think they'd leave their car where it was at and walk between the two. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? 
Motion on 5C. Avichel motion that the plan commission approve the site and landscape and building plans for the multi-tenant retail development located at 7001 South Howell Avenue subject to the following conditions. One, that all building and fire codes are met. Two, that the lighting plan is approved by our expert electrical inspector prior to the issuance of building permits. Three, that the final site, grading, drainage, and stormwater management plans are approved by the engineering department. Four, that a revised landscape plan be submitted to the Department of Community Development prior for approval prior to the issuance of building permits. Five, that a revised site plan be submitted to the Department of Community Development for the approval for approval prior to the issuance of building permits. Chandler, second. Roll call. Dickman, aye. Dunstan, aye. Rillo, aye. Kavich, aye. Scafidi, aye. Wisikowski, aye. Rillo, aye. Super, aye. Chandler, aye. Nice project. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you to staff as well. Thank you. 5D is a plan review of site building and landscaping plan submitted by Tom Howald, Aldi Inc. for an addition to the existing building at 6810 South 27th Street. Text key number 737-9031-001. Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a request for a 540 square foot addition for a bakery facility on the attached to the existing Aldi building, which will be on the western side of the existing building. And this is an elevation, and I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can get a better understanding of what they're proposing. But essentially what they're doing is matching the existing building materials, which are brick. Um, they will be losing a couple of parking spaces. However, they, are, they currently do meet the, the requirement. Um, there's probably adequate parking, beyond adequate parking at, at the current time, and the loss of approximately five to six stalls won't affect that. There are no additional employees that are proposed as part of this um, addition. There's no new lighting or signage that's proposed. They are proposing some landscaping to replace the vegetation along 27th Street. Um, but as the addition is on existing impervious surface, there's no need for additional landscaping adjacent to the building. One question that was um, raised by the utility is whether or not the existing sanitor sanitary WYE connection is going to be used or if they're proposing a new one. Staff recommends that they just coordinate with the utility on that question. The recommendation is that the Plan Commission approves the site and building plan submitted by Tom Howell, Aldi Inc. for the property at 6810 South 27th Street, subject to conditions one through six. Mr. Mayor. Questions? Mr. Yeah. Siebert. I just have a question about the stormwater drainage. Is there any change to that stormwater just because of that small addition? I spoke with uh, with Phil Biermeister in the engineering department, and he didn't indicate that there would be any required stormwater uh, modifications for this. Anything else, Commissioner Dickman? Uh, you do mention that all uh, in the staff recommendation that all building of fire codes are met. Well, because this is a baking area with fire codes, I want to ask the fire department if you have any concerns. Or is there something unique that they have to do because of the ovens and you know temperatures that, that is occurring? My Cressic Fire Department, uh, there would be code requirements, but until you really determine what type of equipment is in play and the type of venting required for that equipment, um, it's hard to specify at this point. I wouldn't anticipate anything unusual for a, a rather routine operation. A lot of screen time tonight. <laughs> Brought him out here for Extra. some. Well, he's highly paid, too. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I have a question for Go the ahead. applicant. Uh, name and address for the record. Uh, Tom Howell with all the ink, 9342 South 13th Street, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, 53154. In regards to equipment, what additional type of equipment will be stored in this area? Uh, in regards to equipment for this proposed bakery, if you go to the floor plan, Carrie, um, you can see on the lower portion of of the drawing itself, we've got a proposal of two ovens right now, and we they're a rational oven and a Vichu oven that we're looking at for this proposed project. Um, and then on the far left, we do have a walk-in freezer for the raw materials, and then there's going to be the staging area, the three compartment sink, the prep area, um, and then the display area as well. So, it's a standard bakery. Okay, and will this change the hours of operation? 
there will not be any changes to the current operation of the store. Um, we're going to be evaluating our process with operational needs and whether we need to staff additional people or not. Uh, this is a very first test concept for Aldi. Um, and so Oak Creek is one of our first stores nationally that we're actually looking at because we do have a very good um, market here that we have very loyal customer base as well. Thank you. Exciting. Thanks for uh, stepping out for us. Yeah. Cool. Appreciate Any it. other questions? Yeah, in turn. Motion on 5D. David will make a motion that the plan commission approve the site and building plan submitted by Tom Howard Aldi Inc. for the property at 6810 South 27th Street with the following conditions. One, that the exterior brick veneer meets the minimum four inch thick requirement per code. Two, that all revised plans, site, building, landscape, lighting, details, et cetera, are submitted in digital and paper formats for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Three, that all mechanical equipment, ground, building, and rooftop is screened from view. Four, that all building and fire codes are met. And five, that the stormwater and grading plans are submitted for final approval by the engineering department prior to the issuance of permits and that all water and sewer utility connections are coordinated with the Oak Creek Water and Sewer Utility. Corral second. I think I heard Corral second. Roll call. Hickman aye. Johnston aye. Corral aye. Kavich aye. Speedy aye. Wisikowski aye. Corral aye. Super aye. Chandler aye. Good luck, guys. Uh, motion to adjourn. Corral moves to adjourn at 7.36. Corral second. Seconds. Uh, I think I heard Corral second again. Uh, roll call. Dick and I. Johnston and I. Corral I. David Chai. Speedy, yes. Corral, yes. Super and I. Thank you for watching. Have a great 4th of July. We'll see you at the parade.